Number one. I'm currently in college about an hour away from my hometown parents' house. Every other weekend or so, I drive home to spend time with my parents. I then leave around 8 to 9 p.m. on Sunday nights to come back up to my apartment. By that time, the sun is set and it is completely dark out. My parents live in a very rural area of Ohio where there are fields for miles and little to no traffic at night. One particular Sunday, I was driving back to my apartment as usual. It was around 8.30. I'm about 25 minutes into my hour drive. It's dark out and I haven't seen a single car the whole ride. I drive through this tiny town with only one stoplight as I make my way to the interstate. As I reach the edge of this town into more country roads, a red, beat-up car cuts me off by pulling out in front of me. Obviously, I'm pissed. There are no other cars around. The guy could have waited for me to pass. I get over it quickly because my favorite song at the time comes on the radio and I start singing along. I began to notice that the car in front of me is only going about 45 miles per hour. The speed limit is 65 miles per hour, so it's a bit ridiculous. I look for ways to pass him, but an intersection is coming up. I decide to wait and see if he goes a different direction than me. It's a four-way intersection, pitch black, with no one else around. As we come closer to it, the car in front of me switches on its hazards and stops in the middle of the road. I slow down so I don't hit him. I see the driver's side window roll down and an arm wave at me as if to call me over for help. Now, I'm a very paranoid person, so I refuse to stop for someone I don't know in the middle of the night. I quickly maneuver around the car and make my right turn at the intersection, leaving the car behind. I look in my rearview mirror and see the car switch off its hazards immediately and gun it out of there. Another car comes out of a driveway near the intersection and follows it. Remember, there was no one else on the road with us for miles. I can only assume the two cars were together trying to get me to pull over and do God knows what with me. To this day, I don't drive home that late anymore. Number two. In summer of 2012, my boyfriend and I went to a beach close to us in coastal New England. It was the evening, and we walked on the beach for a while, walked through the arcade and boardwalk, and decided to go for a drive up the coast. As it was early August, it was an extremely humid, foggy night. We pulled off on one of those small parking lots that dot the coastal road. It was around 10 p.m., and no one was parked there, so we thought it wouldn't be terrible. We made our way to the back seat and fooled around for a while. We didn't have sex, because we are already too paranoid to do that in case we were caught. No charges of semi-public nudity for us. We had finished our fun, and we were relaxing, basking in the romantic afterglow. I had my head resting on my boyfriend's chest, shoulder, when I looked up to kiss him on the cheek. In the edge of the fogged-up window, I saw a face staring intently at us, pressed up against the glass. I screamed. Ah! My boyfriend turned his head in the direction, saw the face, and did a bit of a scream himself. We saw the figure run away from the car, over the sand dune, and onto the beach. I felt terrified and immediately violated and decided in that moment I probably would never be the same. Not true, but in the moment it was quite scary. In a rush of adrenaline, my boyfriend wanted to chase after him and yelled, I'll get you, you son of a bitch! Into the dark, I pleaded with him to get back into the car, not to do anything rash, and to lock the doors and go find a police station. We asked a man who had recently pulled into that same small parking lot sometime during our rendezvous, probably for some night fishing, if he had seen anyone run onto the beach. He had, 
but couldn't tell where he would have gone. We drove to the nearest police station and just filed a report that some random man was either purposefully peeping into the cars of strangers to scare them or to get some kicks. They said they'll let the patrol know. Perhaps it was a rascally teenager, or perhaps it was someone with worse intentions. We drove home in the fog, very shaken, and I was convinced that there must have been some way he could have been videotaping us, because his face seemed to have a halo of artificial light around it. But I'm sure he wasn't. It would have been hard to see anything. We haven't parked and fooled around anywhere since. Number three. It was spring of last year, one of the first beautiful days we had here in western New York, after a rough, brutal, and cold winter. The sun was out, most of the snow melted away, and the temperature had finally risen above 40 degrees. Me and my two friends, Nicole and Gabrielle, had planned to make the most of it and go driving around and take some photos. We were really into photography and exploring really dingy, overrun areas of the towns surrounding our city. I personally had always liked to explore south of the city. It was desolate, creepy, and seemed to present a lot of opportunity for getting some really good and gritty photos. We planned to meet up and I would drive. Now my car wasn't the best to take on many trips. She was a 2004 rusting, had transmission issues, and after a while of driving, would take a while to start up. However, I always liked driving since I got to control where we were going and where we would stop. And also, the most important, control the music. So we're driving around, blasting music, and having casual conversation here and there. It's a beautiful day, and the vibes are great. Our first intended stop was to go back and check out an abandoned church Gabrielle and I had previously explored during the winter. The vibes were really unnerving, so we got out of there immediately. So as we start to approach where this place was, we notice it's completely gone. No church. Nothing. We later came to find out it was torn down. We were a little bummed, but also relieved to have avoided any potential weirdness. We continued to drive, stopping at random places on the side of the road and snapping a few pictures. We eventually went to a really cool and creepy beach, came across an abandoned train station, and a few weird abandoned factory-type places. Luckily, we didn't run into any trouble or feel any bad vibes with these places. We were really stoked on the amount of photos we got and all the cool stuff we got to see. We must have been out for about five to six hours and the sun was starting to set. We were probably an hour away from home and decided we should wrap it up, get some food, start heading back. Driving back, I realized that I'm not exactly sure where we are and how to get back onto a main road. So I plug my address into my phone and get GPS directions to take us the right way. The directions take us down this really interesting road in the middle of an Indian reservation. There were a bunch of old, beaten-down houses that clearly nobody was living in as trees were growing through them and branches and vines engulfed most of them. I really wanted to stop and take a few night shots of these houses as I think they'd look cool and creepy. So we pull into the driveway of one of the houses. The driveway was all gravel, and the house was pretty far up from the road, but I made sure to park more toward the street, just in case things got super creepy and we had to make a quick getaway. It was getting really dark. There was barely any light coming from the street or surrounding houses, as most of them seemed to be abandoned. So we had to use the flash in our phones to kind of light our path. The house is completely surrounded by brush and bushes and old furniture that seemed to have been thrown out of the windows. It was some real Texas chainsaw crap. We all get really uneasy but decided to stay a little bit just to get a decent amount of photos. Once we decide that we had enough, we head back to the car. As we're about to get in, a truck pulls up blocking the driveway and ultimately blocking us in from leaving. 
we all immediately freeze as this dude's intentions are obviously immediately known. He rolls down his passenger side window. At this point, it's completely dark and we can't see inside the truck or see his face and ask us what we're doing there. We all answer that we were just taking some quick pictures and had intended on leaving at that moment. Pictures of what? He asks. The tone in his voice is very hostile and sinister. At this point, Nicole and Gabrielle both get into my car, leaving me outside having to talk an answer to this guy. Pictures of the house, I answer. My voice was clearly trembling, and he must have been able to tell we were all scared. For what? For a school project, I lied. What project? For a photo project, I lied again. For where? Buffalo State College. For what? A project on houses. During this exchange, he was rummaging through something in the passenger seat. He appeared to be writing something down as well, and using what looked like the light from his cell phone to look at what he was writing. What's so special about this house? He says, emphasizing this as if he has some sort of connection to it. It's just interesting and looked cool, I say, as I start to open my door. I look into my car and see my friends literally on the verge of tears. Gabrielle turns to me and says, We need to go. Get in the car and let's go. I look at her with concern as there isn't anywhere to go as he has us blocked in on either side of the driveway and there's brush and very muddy swampy terrain. You know you're not supposed to be here, right? He says. There are signs all over saying so. I look around. There was a sign or two on some trees. We hadn't noticed them before, unfortunately. I'm sorry. We didn't know, I say. The man starts to rummage again. Every time he went to grab something or make noise, I thought for sure he was going to pull out a gun or something. He pulled out what looked like his phone again. He starts talking to someone to come meet him where we were. It didn't seem like he was talking to the police because the conversation was entirely too casual and chummy almost. Look, I'm sorry, we're going now, I say heading into the car. And then what came out of his mouth next was the most scary thing another human has ever said to me. You're not going anywhere. I could imagine the evil, sinister grin on his face while saying it. A sudden rush of adrenaline came upon me, and I quickly get in my car, slam the door shut, and lock everything. I go to start my car, and she's not starting. We all begin to panic and start cursing. I keep trying, knowing my car does this all the time, and usually by the third try, she gets going. I keep looking out my rearview mirror to see if the guy is still in his truck, what he's doing. He was still on the phone. Thankfully, I get her started on the third try. Next problem, there isn't anywhere to go. I look to my right. The path to escape was clear, but if I escape that way, I end up behind the truck, which seemed like a really crazy idea and scenario. I look to the left. Brush, mud, garbage. If I escape this way, I risk getting stuck, and then we're really done for. I take my chances on going left. I put my car in drive and turn the steering wheel all the way to the left and slam on the gas driving through the mud and brush. We peeled right out of there. Luckily, there were a few cars coming down the road and we were able to speed out of there in front of them, creating some distance between us and the truck if he were to follow us. I had never driven so fast in all my life. We were all screaming and overwhelmed with such relief. My friends kept looking back to see if he was following us, but there were quite a few cars behind us to tell if he was or not. Before we know it, we make it back onto a main road where we were surrounded by stores and restaurants and a bunch of cars and feel much safer and head home in one piece. Now, we're definitely more careful to investigate our surroundings when we go out to take photos in sketchy places. However, something about this guy didn't seem like he wanted to reinforce the fact that this place was a no trespassing zone, but instead wanted to scare, torment us. Who even knows? Creepy Mina here of the Worst Nightmare Channel. I hope you enjoyed those three stories of women encountering danger while on the road. I'm still looking for 
stories of nurses with paranormal experiences while on the job, imaginary friends, stories that perhaps they weren't so imaginary, and stories of shadow people. If you have any stories like this you'd like to share on this channel, please send them to creepymina at gmail.com. And of course, you can always submit them to brosgrim.co or Willing Stories, the subreddit, and any horror channel narrator can use them on their channel. Now you know the drill. Please give me a thumbs up. Comment below. Have you ever had a bad experience while on a road trip? Subscribe if you haven't already. Share on your favorite social networking platform. And always remember to stay safe.